Yo, what is going on you guys? Bastion Wiser here and today we are going to be going over a banlist prediction. Banlist is going to be as announced coming out in late August which is just over 3-4 weeks away now so we don't know exactly when it's going to be coming out. They could announce it tomorrow and then they could have it be active in 3 weeks. I, it could, they, could act, they could announce it now or they could announce it in 3 weeks have it active the next day. Konami as far as that goes won't tell us a exactly how much time they'll give us after they announce it but i will give konami credit where credit is due they at least let us know when the man list is going to be coming out so that we don't overly stress when it comes down to preparing for the nawcq because it would have been a very konami move to not let us know and then drop the ban list the same day that they dropped the the, the set that would have been absolutely ridiculous and absolutely crazy and i probably would have played like I don't know, uh, six samurais for the for the Nats. I don't know what I would have played. <laughs> something something stupid, right? Um, but today, guys, I want to go ahead and go over what I believe the balance is going to look like. What I believe cards are need to get hit are going to get hit. So we're going to be going over a whole bunch of cards today, guys. Every single card here, when I want to go ahead and at least touch on today, um, whether they're going to be untouched, whether they're going to be banned, a semi limited, whatever it might be, I want to go ahead and just discuss them real quick with you guys, just so you guys understand where my thoughts are. Uh, on what the potential next balance will look like now just because I have a whole bunch of cards on here doesn't mean I'm gonna have the craziest balance of all time I, it might be it might be but I'm not saying it will just because I'm not gonna throw everything into ban right that would be absolutely ridiculous and might as well reset and then reinvent the brand new game so if you guys like this type of discussion videos or you just want to go ahead and see me release my most inner deepest darkest thoughts onto the interweb make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe down below but let's go ahead and get right into it guys right so I want to go ahead and go over real quick the Master Duel ban list that came out about I think two days ago, two three days ago. As I'm recording this video, so they did something that I think is what Konami is going to then do here in the TCG. Which, if you have see here, I do have of course the gimmick puppet, the Albion, and the uh, the Ido. Right, so if you guys don't know, Ido is another card that can be used in the event gimmick puppet is banned, which Ido says that you cannot summon. Right, so that is a really big restriction. Honestly, I think you are, I can argue that it's better than the gimmick puppet lock, uh, but it just says you cannot summon. Right, so that's something that we definitely have to at least consider uh, when we're thinking about the branded package. Hit. And I'm gonna go ahead and touch this first because I feel like this is the one that individuals are most divided on. Uh, and then we'll hit the snake eye stuff. We'll talk about the snake eye stuff here in a little bit as well. So, first things first, guys, uh, what Konami did in Master Duel was they banned the gimmick puppet and they banned the idol, but left the sanctifier, I believe, untouched in Master Duel. So, I think this is probably gonna be the best way to go about it as well. I mean, I didn't really consider idol, I thought they were just gonna go, oh, okay. Uh, uh, go DD Orthros or some other nonsense as well. But realistically speaking, DD Orthros at least lets you special summon fiend monsters. It doesn't completely lock you into no summoning at all. Uh, which is if you sub if you're locked into just summoning fiend monsters, I would highly prefer that than being locked into specifically gimmick puppets. Because if I'm not and I don't play gimmick puppets in my deck, I'm screwed. Uh, which is a much more of a niche uh, than playing just fiends, which there's hundreds and thousands of fiend monsters out there right now. Uh, same thing with Ido, you just can't summon at all, which is just really, really bad. <laughs> It's a really, really bad lock, guys. So I think banning these two is a smarter move. I will agree with Konami. To, I know, shocker. Uh, but I will agree with Konami on that. I think this is definitely the correct move to go about it. Because realistically, like I said, you can go uh, Ross Disciple. You could go uh, DD Orthros as well. There's so many other cards that lock you into other stuff. But... I think hitting the two most cancerous ones and leaving Albion is probably going to be the best way to go about it. If they want to touch Branded Fusion or anything else in that deck, that's going to be completely on them. I'm not going to even touch that subject because realistically, Branded is a deck that always does really well. People prepare for it and then it doesn't do that well and then it, it's, it, you know, it escapes each and every single ban list. So that's always something that's fun to consider. Uh, Poplar, uh, while it is a good card, I don't think this actually is going to get touched. Poplar, because um, realistically, when it comes to the Snake Eye stuff, and we'll go ahead and go over all of them, right? So we'll go ahead and go over the, the Snake Eye Ash as well. I don't think Ash is going to hit. If it does get hit, it'll probably be semi limit. 
nothing too crazy as far as that's concerned hitting the consistency now what i think konami will do because realistically snake has been the best deck for a little bit over half a year now if i'm not mistaken seven eight months which seems like an eternity in Yu-Gi-Oh terms guys i think what the most reasonable option is is to ban the flamber's dragon which it does a lot against the strategy don't get me wrong limiting flamber's dragon does absolutely nothing to the deck why? Because the deck currently only plays maybe one Flamber's Dragon, sometimes two, but you're always going to play one Flamber's Dragon. So if you put it to one, you're not really hurting the deck at all. You have to ban this card because this card gets you interruption, access to IP, and also gets you access to it just extra bodies, guarantees you follow up. It's a 3k beater. Like there's so many things you can do with this card and it just makes it extremely, extremely hard to play against it just because of all the things that this one card does. Now another card I wanna go ahead and consider is gonna be Wanted. Now Wanted as a card has been a main topic of discussion as well as it gets you a draw, it searches you Diabell Star, so it does a lot of things for the deck. And I believe it's one of the oldest cards that was released for this specific art type now having that that being said i think what the most will do is semi-limit i don't think it's going to be a card that's going to be limited i think it's gonna, potentially going to be semi-limited but it's, they, they just want to nerf the crap out of out of snake eye you ban the flambird and you really don't even have to hit these two will they plan to get hit maybe I believe that's a solid maybe, but again, it's something that they don't have to do. Same thing with the original Stable Spells. They could ban this card as well just because it gets you additional access and extender or whatever it be, but I think this is a great card to act as a bridge. It bridges the the Infernoid deck with the Snake Eye, it bridges the Fire King deck with the Snake Eye, so that's why I believe original Stable Spells is not going to get hit at all in the event it was ever on you guys' radar. Now, as far as additional cards are concerned, we need to go ahead and discuss Beatrice. Beatrice getting banned. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, bro. This card is absolutely getting banned. There's no way this card stays for another format. And I'll tell you why. Beatrice has been a extremely oppressive card in multiple different formats. Anything that can make level sixes, bestials, uh, now the Fiendsmith, which makes it extremely easily. It just makes this card so toxic because you can go Angel Blue Tears, go ahead and, uh, uh, what's it called? Detached Lacrimosa, which for whatever reason burns you for 1200, which makes it didn't even have that effect. It's such an unnecessary effect, but it burns you for 12. And then, you can go ahead and set whatever trap you want in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh to your field. You can set D Barrier, Different Dimension Ground, you can set um, uh, Black Goat Laughs, Trickstar Reincarnation, uh, just wishful thinking there. But you can set so many things off there. Don't get me wrong, I definitely want to go ahead and build Fiendsmith Trickstar, and I guarantee you it's going to be a great deck. However, Beatrice being in the format is just not healthy at this point in time. You can do so many... Um, graveyard floodgates you can go ahead and send. There's also the Griffin lock, so you can go ahead and set whatever you want, and then uh, summon out Griffin. It just really reset. I mean, set reset it with Griffin if you go ahead and set it with Beatrice. There's so many things you can do with this card. I just think it has to go ahead and get hit. There's just, there's no way that this lives in another format. Uh, next card we're gonna so we've we've discussed Snake Eye. <laughs> I feel like we've discussed Snake Eye uh, enough. Right, uh, when it comes down to the next best deck of the format being you, Bell, uh, you can hit a Dark Beckoning Beast. Which realistically, all the cards are very, very new, except for the obvious. You're not gonna hit you, Bell, and you're not gonna hit you, Bell, Terra Incarnate, or you, Bell, the third one, a Nightmare, blah, 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 blah. Right, so what you have to do is then go ahead and look outside the realm and say, What are the support cards for it? I think Dark Beckoning Beast is definitely a candidate for it, but it's not really the biggest issue. I think the biggest issue is the um, uh, opening of the Spirit Gates. I think that's what the Continuous Spell is called. This card is actually really, really crazy because it gives you so much advantage, right? Especially from the graveyard, you get that, uh, uh, that search on activation, uh, which, yeah, you can argue it's easily countered if you IP in the SP Banish or whatever, right? But, but even then, the timing of it doesn't even make sense. So when it comes down to, to this card as well, I just don't think it's healthy for for the game to have one card give you that much advantage. Same same issue, not the, quite the same, but a similar issue with Flamber Dragon, and you're just getting a lot of advantage here, guys. So I think opening the Spirit Gates is definitely a limit-worthy card, not a ban-worthy card. Limit it, you can still go ahead and play it. You can still play three Dark Backing Beasts, you can get, make sure you search it out and things like that. And if you happen to draw it, you draw it, but it's not really a card that 
It's not as, this is not gonna feel nearly as tacky because you still play three beckoning beasts in order to search it, so you have that going for yourself, right? It's not like uh, the change of heart or the call by the grave, which feels really sacky because, or at least call by the grave, you can't search it. At least with um, with the uh, change of heart, you can search it with triple tactics thrust. Uh, Tempai Dragon. Tempai Dragon is a, uh, a, a it's a deck. <laughs> It is a deck and I do play fire dragons um, Now that we got the obvious stuff out of the way it, all of the all of the support cards for uh, for Tenpai are Brand new except for all the synchros which are all one ofs essentially in the extra deck, right? So I think you have to now limit the field spell which again is a very new card all the tenpai cards are relatively pretty brand new uh having been out with maybe two three months if i'm not mistaken i think the tenpai field spell is the most impressive part of, about the entire deck and i definitely do see where you're coming from if you say it's sang and kaiman however being that sang and summoning says that you cannot uh, your your fire dragons are unaffected by your opponent's activated effects means your opponent can't imperm you veiler you can't Ghost Mourner you, can't do anything to you in the main phase one, is a bit much, right? So I think we can all agree with that, even 10 Pyre players can agree this card is absolutely ridiculous. If you see a field spell, three interruptions and a Pyjra, you're winning that game. No doubt in your entire mind you're winning that game, so... I think that's something that at least is worth considering when hitting the Tempai Shred. I mean, like I said before, there's no other cards I would see that would be able to hit this deck. Like, you're not going to hit Heavenly Dragon Spheres. You're not going to. We're being realistic with it. Konami's not going to hit that card. Konami's not going to ban Trident Dragon. Even if you do, that's perfectly fine. You don't need that card to OTK 99% of the time. When it does come up, it comes up. Don't get me wrong. It's very nice to hit for 18,000 points of damage. But it's not a card that's mandatory for you to go ahead and play. Uh, so that's going to be it. That's my two cents on Tempai. There's nothing else we need to talk about that. But uh, let's talk about uh, Dimension Shifter. Dimension Shifter has been, a again, a hot topic of conversation for a while now. Will it get hit? Won't it get hit? Is It's a toxic card. It's not a card I like at all. Uh, knowing Konami, I don't know if it's... It, it's tough because I don't know who Konami is going to listen to. They could just completely ignore the shit out of all of us and just say, Oh, Shifter is just, just a hand trap. It's only a temporary thing. This card has been one of the most impressive cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! since Fluandries and Kashira were out like, what, a year and a half ago? So this card has been relevant in the format for that long. Yes, yes, for that long. And... It just keeps finding new homes, right? It's finding new homes. If you see a shifter, you're most likely winning that game, which makes me think that shifter is a ban-worthy card. Do I agree with that? Me personally, no. Shifter is an inconvenient card that you can still play under, but I can see why Konami would ban it. Now, I personally don't think that it's something I would do, I would say it leave it untouched, leave it unlimited, but that's just me speaking. Uh, let's go ahead and keep going though guys. So uh, a funny card from from the past two uh, national championships, NAWCQ and also Euro WCQ, Euro e -U -E -W -C -Q, I, I think that's what it's called. Anyway, uh, Euros and Nat and US Nationals just took place the past two weekends. And we can honestly say Spooky Dogwood is a ban worthy card. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The Spooky Dogwood is not a ban worthy card, guys. Let's chill out on the Dogwood hate, my friend. Cali Effect would not like that uh, if uh, we speak we speak the, the, the Spooky Dogwood in name in vain, okay? Spooky Dogwood is a great card, don't get me wrong, but it, come, it, it just recently became a crazy good card, and the reason for that is because the combos literally take 10 to 15 minutes to go ahead and play, and they're not even slow playing. We've seen the streams, if you guys have watched any of the live streams for the past two weekends, it literally takes about 10 to 15 minutes for you to actually do your U Bell slash Snake Ike Fiendsmith combos. During that time, if you Spooky Dogwood, you have that upper hand of whether you're going to have your opponent full combo and you're going to gain 30,000 life points, or they stop what they're doing and they get OTK by whatever they're going up against. They could be going up against Exodia, they could be going up against uh, whatever other rogue deck, they could be destroyed by Drytron or whatever crap you're playing. I think Spooky Dogwood is a very healthy card for the format, even though it does give you a win in time condition. But if Konami didn't think win in time was a healthy thing to go ahead and do, why does Lacrimosa? 
burned for 1200 for no reason whatsoever and why do we have a gimmick puppet ftk deck the burn damage is a part of the game and i think that gaining life points should also be a part of the game and the fact that it's only one card that really allows you to gain life points consistently consistently because you can't really search it i think that's pretty bonkers so that leaves untouched we spent too much time on that card uh ip mascarena is a card that i could definitely see getting banned and the reason for that and the reason why i put this over appaloosa why i put it over sp little knight why i put it over any other stuff right as far as that goes is because is because IP Mascarena lets you link summon on your opponent's turn, which then makes Appaloosa really, I mean, which makes uh, SP Little Knight even better of a card because you can make it during your opponent's turn, which means you can go ahead and activate the effect to banish a card on your opponent's turn, which means you're not being re uh, restricted by that. Uh, by the downside of SP Little Knight, which means you can't uh, declare a direct attack that turn you activate that effect, which in if sp little knight was used as it was intended to dirt to be made during your turn and you just kind of have it it seems like a much much more balanced sp little knight is a very balanced card you have to realize as an i think personally it's a very very balanced card but ip mascarena makes appaloosa that much better because then it can't be destroyed by card effects which means you can't lightning storm it you can't uh either regeki it you can't get rid of it you have to take control of it which then leads me on to further things we're going to go ahead and talk about of course but I think IP Mascarena is potentially a banworthy card. Do I think Konami will? They might. They very well might. Uh, it would hate to, we would hate to see it go, especially because it just got the reprint. So yeah, it would be kind of messy as far as that goes. But it's definitely something I could see Konami doing. Uh, Prank Kids Meow Meow Mew can definitely come back to one. Let's go ahead and talk about some stuff coming off the ban list now. Prank Kids Meow Meow Mew to one because i look this card could go to three and prank isn't isn't it it will compete as a as a road to tier two deck do not get me wrong prank is still really really good if it has a link one but it doesn't have a link one so then it cannot be really really good so if it if you put it at one see how it goes konami and then you let me know if this card is broken or not or if you're gonna go ahead and put it to three I think if Prank Kids Meow Meow Mew goes to one, first of all, the representation of that deck is going to go through the roof because a lot of people are really big fans of the deck, myself included as well, so I will be playing that as well. You know, stay tuned for some deck profiles. <laughs> um, but I think it's definitely, definitely a card that can come off of the balance. Another card that can join it is his uh, long distance cousin. Uh, Super Heavy Samurai Scarecrow, which was a very wrongfully banned after like two weeks of the deck being legal which was the most scumbag move konami has ever done <laughs> for the first time ever a deck made entirely of monsters was going to be the best deck of the format potentially potentially super heavy samurai was definitely in that conversation of the best deck the best decks of the format at that time i forgot what the other two decks were but it was like definitely top three top two best decks and then konami just slapped scarecrow in the face banned it and then we only got like two weeks of use out of it which was a great two weeks would have liked to use it for a little bit longer though so konami bring it to one let us super heavy salmon players see what we can do and we'll take it out from there uh let's go ahead and ban calamity it uh, look centurion any calamity deck is really not doing super hot right now doesn't make it so that this card isn't toxic let's go ahead and get that out the way uh, and that's just that's just putting it very very bluntly Cent centurion or, or what's it called or any any deck that makes this as its number one priority um just doesn't do that well but it's still a toxic card and i would rather just see this go does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Uh, next card, uh, look, Runic Stun has been on a tear the past few months, right? I think it started earlier this year, if not late last year, where Runic Stun really started to take it to effect. It's one of the better decks of the format, but one of the best, if not the best, anti matter strategy currently in the format. Extremely budget friendly as well. If you guys wanna see some amazing, amazing Runic Stun gameplay and deck design, make sure you guys check out, of course, Asian Persuasion, the man himself. Uh, killing it at Nats with uh, with the Runic Stun deck as he always does. So that look, Runic Fountain has to go to one 
and that's just plain and simple. Is it sucks? It sucks because Runic is a very very fun strategy. Uh, I very much am a fan of it overall as an engine, and but primarily it could. So the Runic cards could say like you don't have to deck out your opponent, like you don't have to banish cards on top of your deck. You just get the regular effects, and then you get to go ahead and fountain to draw three. And I would still play the strategy. It's a really, really good strategy. I think it's very, very well made because uh, it has a lot of great interaction. And I think Joshua Smith said it best himself when he's praising the the engine or this deck's um, abilities. But I just don't think that it is currently used in the most healthy way right now. So therefore, rooting fountain will be limited. Uh, I want to go ahead and speed passes real quick. Uh, Zodiac, Barrage, Dryden, and Bravo can all come to one. Zodiac's not doing anything, but I think it'll be really fun to see what people can cook up with some Zodiac. This is more of a wish list. I'm not gonna lie. This is definitely wish list stuff because no one right now is talking about Zodiac. But I think I mentioned them in my last balance production. I really just want to see what Zodiac is able to do in the current format. So Brady's the one. Let's see what happens. It was wrap here. Wrap here. All right. Let's go ahead and unban these and put them to limited and let's see where this goes. Uh, Branded Fusion is is not going to get touched. Branded is not getting touched except for this gimmick puppet nonsense and idols and this stuff. Uh, Brand is not going to get touched. Yeah, let's go ahead and keep moving. Uh, Skill Drain has... Uh, it, it's very, very likely for this card to get limited. Let's go ahead and call it like it is. They've Konami has limited every single other Floodgate in the game right now. Uh, Synchro Zone might be next, um, but I know Rivalry, of course, there can be. Every every Floodgate was limited, except for Skill Drain. And I think Skill Drain is an extremely toxic card in the current format because it, it absolutely just shits on all top tier decks right now. Destroys Snake Eye, destroys, uh, what's it called? Ubel destroys um, Tempai, but Snake Eye can abuse this because they can send it for Witch and Special Summon and just keep playing on their terms. And the fact that it can be abused by Witch makes it so that this card has to get banned. You get what I'm saying? So, uh, once Snake Eye it does not become the best deck, then it's trying to stay at 3, which then goes counter what I said earlier. If Flamber Dragon does get banned, then we may be able to keep Skill Drain at three, which then means, of course, Runic Stun would still be. So you know what? Just limit, just limit Skill Drain. <laughs> just limit Skill Drain. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Uh, Kieran's in here. Uh, that's not getting touched. Fire King hasn't been relevant in a while, unfortunately. But if Flamber gets hit, then we'll see a lot more Snake Guy Fire King variants, guaranteed. Um, I think Chicken Game can go ahead and come to three. It can go ahead and come to two. Let's chill out. Chicken Game can come to two. I think uh, no one, no one is playing this in this card at one. It can definitely come to two, potentially three. But I think Konami is going to go ahead and put it to two. Let's go ahead and call it. You know, let's be fair about it. Uh, Lightning Storm. Lightning Storm is a card that I think Konami will either limit or ban. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the limit pop right now. And I only say this because. It's another way to go ahead and hit Tempai indirectly, if you will. Because there's another amazing board breaker that they put to two, which originally we didn't think too much of it. But now, knowing what Tempai can do and knowing how accessible the deck is for the most part, this card is really scary. So I think they're going to go ahead and put it to one, if not potentially ban it. You're still going to go ahead and play in your Tempai deck. So you can go ahead and play Thrust, Search it, or you just need to see in your opening hand. If you don't, it's fine. Because uh, that's kind of how we're going to uh, playing about it anyway. But I think this could potentially come to one and then, you know, see where it goes from there. Uh, another card that I believe is going to move on this next ban list is going to be Change of Heart. Change of Heart and Snatch Steel to two potentially. Potentially. Uh, this is not a wish list. This is not, you know, you know whatever you want to call it. I think I really, really believe Snatch Steel to one. Uh, has not seen a huge, huge boost in viability. It's still a nice card, don't get me wrong. Uh, I still think you would prefer to have Change of Heart. If they don't uh, move up the, uh, what's it called, the Change of Heart, and they just put the Snatch Shield to two, I can definitely see that as well because Snatch Shield is much easier to be countered uh, than Change of Heart. So that's something that I could potentially see. You know what? I think that makes the most amount of sense. Put Snatch the other two. Don't mess with Change of Heart. Change of Heart going to anything more than one. That's that's main deck worthy, baby. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but yeah, Snatch Steel to 2 is thing is definitely something that could happen. Uh, Heavy Storm is a card I've been thinking about for a while now, because Harpy's Feather Duster is exists in the game. Uh, I don't think it's going to be coming back on this ban list right now, uh, but it's a card that we can potentially start to talk about and discuss further as far as will it, won't it, in the current format. Uh, Link Karibo has already been banned, so we didn't got to talk about it. Masterpiece can definitely come to, uh, uh, come to, come to one. Just, just give me one. Just give me one Masterpiece. <laughs> We're going to be fine. Masterpiece is not doing anything. It could realistically go ahead and come to three in the format and still not do a single thing. Just going to be perfectly honest with you guys uh, on that for sure. Uh, Dragonic Diagram, same thing. It can definitely go ahead and come to two. Airlifter can definitely be unbanned at this point. Rescue Ace is not doing a single thing because the best Snake Eye deck in the room is going to be, uh, what's it called? Uh, Snake Eye, Snake Eye. <laughs> uh, so this was, this was nice and everything when we just had uh, Witch Wanted with the, with the original. We didn't have Poplar yet. It was cool, but I think Airlifter can definitely go ahead and come back to three. Rescue Ace is not doing anything crazy. Now, in the event that Flamberg again does get hit, we're going to see Fire King Snake Eye and we're going to see uh, Rescue Ace Snake Eye come back as being one of the better decks of the format. That is guaranteed. Uh, Fenrir is not getting hit. I don't think we need to worry about that one. But yeah, no one's playing Panker Tops in the deck. This card can definitely come back to three. Absolutely no problem. Same thing with Kieran. Kieran's not getting touched. It's not, it hasn't been played in years the second it comes back to the format still nothing because magic specter is still a terrible deck it was cool if they put it to one you know to go ahead and sell a little bit more of their product but this card's not doing a single thing guys this guy can definitely go ahead and come to three unless electromite's coming back let's uh, unban all pendulums just unban all pendulums uh, uh princess not getting hit it's really not a problematic card it you know, targets, pops, it only special summons during your turn, which is, if it's special summons during either player's turn, and it does lock you as well into fire, so I think Princess is a very fair card. I don't think it has, it's a great, it's a great card, don't get me wrong. It's broken for fire strategies, and it provides some OTK lines, which can argue that Zelantis should get banned, whatever, but I really don't see it happening, guys. I think Princess is a good card. I think you can definitely go ahead and stay untouched. Uh, same thing with the uh, Herald. Uh, Voices of Voice not doing anything. Go ahead and uh, is, it, is it unlimited? It can, it can be unlimited if it's not. <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, and that that's pretty much going to be it. these cards we already talked about. If I'm not mistaken, Engage is already at three as well. Link Rebo's already banned. Summon Limits already gone. So that's going to be it for the video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. I honestly I don't think I have too, too many crazy hot, hot takes on here. I think what I'm saying really does make sense. If you guys want to go ahead and discuss this with me in the comments, please go ahead and do so. Uh, just don't roast me too hard, please. <laughs> uh, let me know in the comment section down below what you guys' thoughts are on this next Forbidden Limited list. What are the cards that I missed that you guys know for sure are going to be in this list? Or you guys can predict or have a feeling are going to be on this list in some way, shape, or form. Unlimit, untouched, semi-limit, or forbidden. Let me know in the comment section down below. And let's talk about it, guys. But honestly, I think there's more or less going to be what Konami is going to do. Again, Spooky Dogwood is too good a card, but it will remain untouched for now. Shout out Kali Effect. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.